Nearly 800 years before the birth of Christ, five villages would merge into one city. This city would become locked in time, buried under six meters of volcanic ash and pumice after the eruption of Vesuvius in 79 AD. This, this is Pompeii. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, please hit that like button, subscribe button, etc. Comment. It would mean a lot. Let's get into it. In the 8th century, the Oscans, a group of people that were living in Italy at that time, uh, founded five villages in the area that we know of Pompeii today. The Greeks started to arrive in that area in 740 BC, and therefore the Pompeii people were introduced to Greek culture and practices. They began to build a temple at that time, which would now be called the Triangular Forum. The cult of Apollo was also introduced to the people of Pompeii at that time, and they started to follow the Greek culture. The Greeks and Phoenician sailors would also come to uh, the natural gulf of Naples as a safe port. After the five villages emerged into one city, they began to flourish and maritime trade started with the construction of a small harbour near the mouth of the river. By 524 BC, the ancestors of the Romans, the Etruscans, started to come into that area, but they didn't conquer the city. What they did was very strange at the time. They took a page out of the Greeks' book and decided to use diplomacy. They would control Pompeii, but they made sure that Pompeii had its own autonomy and it was its own city-state. However, they made sure that Pompeii was going to be part of the Etruscan League of Cities. The Etruscans also bought the people of Pompeii over by ensuring that they built their temples and improved their walls so that the city was strong and secure. When the Etruscans decided to have a battle against the Khmer people of Greece in 474 BC, they lost. And what does this mean for Pompeii? Well, it became part of the Greek states. For 50 years, if you were in Pompeii, you would be following the Greek culture, the Greek practices. That was until the Semonite people decided to team up with a startup city to get rid of all the Greeks in that area. That startup city, well, that startup city was Rome. See, Rome at this time had already been around for 300 years, but they weren't the Rome that we know today. They hadn't done any of the conquering or empire building that they did over the next 300 years. However, for the next 200 years, as Rome developed, so did Pompeii. It still had its autonomy. It was still its own city-state. Until General Hannibal had uh, invaded Italy through the north over the Alps, bringing with him war elephants after going through Spain and France, leaving his base in Carthage in northern Africa. A whole lot of southern Italian cities decided to leave the Roman group and go on to Hannibal's side. But Pompeii, Pompeii decided to stay with Rome and eventually Rome decided to win against Hannibal and his army. This was, of course, the Second Punic War in 218 BC. After this victory, Rome started to grow in its power and its influence. And by 89 BC, a whole lot of states in Italy weren't happy with how strong Rome was getting. So, along with a whole lot of other cities in Campania, Pompeii decided to revolt against Rome. Their rebellion, of course, was unsuccessful and Rome did not like to be judged. So Rome took complete control over Pompeii and decided that it was theirs and theirs alone. If you oppose Roman rule, you are deposed of all your possessions. If you agree to Roman rule, you are granted Roman citizenship. Rich Romans flocked to the area because of close vicinity to the sea, fertile farmlands and beautiful surroundings. 
By 70 BC, there was enormous amounts of wealth flowing through the streets. You would have the temples, the bathhouses, the amphitheatres, and the Odeon all being built in Pompeii. And by 20 BC, you could have running water in Pompeii. Life under the Romans prospered, it improved, and Pompeii became an important landmark. On the days leading up to the 24th of August, 79 AD, a number of tremors could be felt, but people didn't take much notice because this was quite normal for the time uh, living so close to the mountain, which hadn't erupted in living memory. Whatever we know about this day comes to us from Pliny the Younger, whose uncle Pliny the Elder was the uh, royal commander of the fleet, of the naval fleet in the Bay of Naples. On the 24th of August, 79 AD, at six o'clock in the morning, there was a tremor that was felt. But it wasn't a normal tremor because the mountain released a small plume of thin ash and smoke into the air. Pompeii continued as normal. By 1 p.m. another tremor was felt and a giant plume of smoke came out of the mountain, blocking the sun from the sky. This ash cloud was enormous and people began to worry. Apparently, people rushed to the temple to pray to the god Vulcan, who uh, is where we get the name Volcano from, and other people began to flee the city. By 2 p.m., a steady ash cloud was starting to come down onto the city, met with white plume rock being hurled at the city. By 5 p.m., there, th there was such a thick buildup of ash and volcanic debris on the roofs of the houses of Pompeii that they started to collapse. Now, already, rocks were being hurled at the city at over 50 meters per second, and the entire city was in complete darkness and utter panic. Pliny the Elder, the naval fleet commander, decided to set off to the Bay of uh, Pompeii so he could help the people that were rushing to the harbour. Pliny the Elder was never seen again. By quarter past eleven that night, the volcano surged again and destroyed the city of Herculaneum, which was close to Pompeii. At midnight, there was another surge and eruption, and it sent toxic gas and ash nearly 30 kilometers into the sky, and what goes up must come down. When this gas and ash cloud would come down, there would be little hope for you. You would either be incinerated by the extreme heat or suffocated due to the toxic gases in the air. At 6.45 a.m. on the 25th of August, 79 A.D., the gas cloud had reached its crescendo and zoomed down onto Pompeii, reaching speeds of around 300 kilometers per hour, laying waste to the city covering it with ash and tephra. Six meters was laid on top of the city, leaving the city locked in time. After a few generations, the exact location of Pompeii had been lost under rock and ash. It remained frozen in time until 1748, where a surveying engineer finally discovered it. The city then went under 250 years of excavation to finally see the light of day again. Why is it worth going to see Pompeii, this colony of Rome, when we do have Rome, Verona, Milan, etc., who are all part of the Roman states? Well, of course, these other cities continue to develop in time, but Pompeii didn't. It was lost time. Pompeii had been frozen, and it's the closest thing that we can get to understanding what these cities were like in that era. If you do go and visit, and I suggest that you do, you'll be able to see Roman forums, you'll be able to see temples, you'll be able to see bathhouses, Roman barracks, the city streets, bars that were originally there, and a number of poor souls that did not leave this city in time. That's our video for today. Thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you've got this far, thank you very much. Click on uh, the next links that are going to come up uh, to watch my other videos. I'm sure that you will enjoy them. Like, comment, subscribe, all the rest. The more you know.